15 reds, 15 blacks, all the colors. Those 36 steps to snooker perfection, the 147. The first recorded instance of someone making a 147 was the great Joe Davis back in 1955 in an exhibition match at Leicester Square Hall in London. The land of but it would take another 27 years before the sport had its first official maximum, courtesy of Joe's name. The possibilities of it happening were sort of like fairy tale stuff. I'd been all around the world on a, a trip with Barry Hearn. We were trying to promote the game in a few places like Australia, Singapore, Las Vegas. It was a holiday. And I was severely jet lagged and fell asleep in the dressing room. Was woken up, came out for the next frame. Larder cars were the sponsors and we all know the prize was the Larder car. Um, at the time I had a Porsche. Fabulous. Bjorn Borg had this habit of blowing his hand, like, you know, just to get the sweat out of his hand. And I did it. I went like that with my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful! 147! Before I knew it, I'd made the first 147 break in a televised event. And, and ironically, John Spencer was the person I did it against, who was the player who'd made a 147 break in a televised event. But as we also know, cameramen wore a tea break. After that, never got close to another 147. And the very next year, so the first ever 147 in the World Championship at the Crucible Theatre. Well, that's one way of getting them, I suppose. We're talking about £18,000 on this. It was getting dark by the time you finish it, to be honest with you. He's, he's not as quick as me. A maxi that began with a fluke and finished with one of Snooker's immortal commentary lines. Oh, good luck, mate. Jack Carnham was also the man on the mic for Snooker's next maximum, as another Canadian put on a white magic masterclass. Kirk with a white suit, such a great guy. He went in and out of bulk a couple of times. Done a fantastic green to get on the brown. One of the greatest shots you'll see in the 147. I wanted to make a 147 in professional snooker, but to do it, you know, at like a Triple Crown event, like the Masters or the Crucible or the UK, makes it extra special. The night that Wembley rocked. The 80s would see only five more 147s. They were still very much collector's items. In fact, it wasn't until 1992 that the Crucible saw its second 147. This is all red, all black so far. A marvellous shot with the rest that was. I've always said that Jimmy White is the best rest player I've ever seen. And if you see the way he played the shot with the rest to keep the break going was fantastic.
Listen, Jimmy White creates his career for the crucible third. I got 147 grand and 14 grand for the highest break and I got to the final that year so I actually got 70 grand more than Hendry which was nice. That same year Stephen Hendry notched up the first of his 11 tournament maximums and in 1995 made the first of his record equaling three Crucible 147s. Two years later, Hendry achieved the unthinkable as he made a maximum break in the deciding frame of a final as he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan 9-8 in the Charity Challenge. Having been 8-2 ahead and pegged back to 8 each, you'd think, you know, you're going to to be gone now. So yeah, but I put the long red and had to follow through off two cushions. What a shot. The deciding frame of, of, a, of a major final against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Um, and yeah, it's probably my most memorable just because of the situation uh, of all my 147s. Hold your breath. This is it. Fantastic performance. I've never seen anything like it in all my career. A brilliant break by a brilliant player. You know, he's just unbelievable, the guy. You know, he's a bit like Tiger Woods, isn't he? You know, he just does it. In the most pressurised situations. But it was only a few months later that Ronnie put himself in the conversation for the greatest ever 147. I don't believe this. What a break! What a fantastic maximum break that is! Ronnie O'Sullivan's delighted, the crowd's delighted, John Virgo, and I'm delighted. Five minutes for one. Unbelievable maximum break. But if that was flawless, John Higgins required a huge slice of luck in the final of the 2003 LG Cup final against Mark Williams. Is the black going in? There's a chance yet. It's there! The maximum still on! Even the best need a bit of luck. Higgins would notch the next two 147s as well, taking the overall total to 49. Although 147s were coming thick and fast, the master still hadn't seen one since Kirk's back in 1984. Although a certain someone did come very, very close. Some people wait a lifetime for a moment. That very same year, Ronnie did to Mark Selby what Hendry had done to him 10 years previously, as he won their UK Championship semi-final in the deciding frame with a 1-4-7. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I kept thinking to myself, because it's a deciding frame, the pressure you might miss one or two here and there, but Ronnie does what Ronnie does best, and uh, yeah, fantastic break. The following year, Sheffield witnessed something truly extraordinary as we saw back-to-back 147s -back on consecutive days. First Ronnie, and then Ali Khan. I was playing around the corner from the other table in 2012 when Hendry made the last of his 11 147s fittingly at the Crucible in his final World Championship. 
my maximum was a break of 36 shots and I think maybe half a dozen shots I, I, I hit the way I, I would like to hit them. Every shot was a pint of blood really. Hendry had made the move into the commentary box when Mark Selby claimed the honour of making the 100 official maximum in his UK Championship semi-final with Ricky Walden the following year. Without a doubt, the toughest brown, blue, pink and black to make a 147. Remember, I potted the last pink with my extension on. Thought I'd played it really well. Next minute, I'm tight on the bottom rail and I'm thinking, here we go, I'll probably miss a black again two times in a season. But thankfully enough for me, I managed to pot a great black in the middle. But if you ever wanted a race and certainty for the greatest single pot ever in a maximum, look no further than the 15th red of the 11th frame in the 2014 Welsh Open final. You're a shooting star, I see. Go on, White. Go on, White. That is perfect. What a shot left-handed, ladies and gents. Unbelievable. I didn't expect to get it, and when it went in, I was like, you know, it was a result, really, and come perfect on the black, so... Yeah, that's probably my best one. And respect to Jamie Burnett, to date the only man ever to make a 148. But nobody has ever made the highest possible break, a 155. And also a tip of the cap to Neil Robertson, the only man to ever make one in a Triple Crown final at the 2015 UK Championship. The nine dart finish, the perfect game. Athletes in all sports strive for perfection but only in a very few can that be quantified. Only 70 of us have ever done it. 36 strokes, 147 points, snooker heaven.